of all, I'd like to thank everyone who voted to me. And then also thank you for being here all the way down from the main room. So yeah, um, then I'm going to talk about uh, the future of JavaScript. So the reason why I would like to have this talk was actually I was really interested. I was really excited about the future of JavaScript also. So yeah, let me introduce myself. So I'm Ryo Chazawa. And I'm working at the company called Viki, which is providing the global uh, video platform. And then my account is Chika36, so you can find me on the GitHub and the Twitter and so on. And I also have uh, Chika36.com for my blog, but it's all in Japanese, so I've just started uh, uh which is the English blog. So, you know, my name is Ryo. But for some of you guys, it's really difficult to pronounce my name. So I'm not you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Leo. <laughs> I'm Leo. Yeah. So I think it's better to start with two sounds, Li, Yo, and then combine them together. So like Leo, 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 Leo. Leo. OK? It works. So yeah, maybe now you remember my name. So, OK, let's get, get back to the JavaScript talk. So I'd like to ask you guys some questions. So how many of you guys have written JavaScript before? Oh, yeah, a lot, a lot. So the next key thing is, how many of you guys have been annoying with JavaScript? Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot, that's a lot. Yeah, I know, I know. So it's right, this, right? <laughs> And then you will end up with the brain, right? <laughs> so yeah, don't get me wrong. I really love JavaScript. But uh, you know, there's a lot of problem in JavaScript. So I listed up the, like a typical big problem of JavaScript. So the first one is this. You know what this is? So this in JavaScript is really complex. So this will be changed depending on the, the how the function is called. So there's a, a lot of type of this. So let's say if you just call the function simply, just calling the function, this will be the global object. But if you call the function as the, the method of the object, this inside of the, uh, the method will be the object. Okay? So the, this is really complex in JavaScript. And the second is scope. So the global scope in JavaScript is easily contaminated. So let's say if you forget to write var in front of the, the definition of variables, it will be the global uh, object, global variables. So, and then also JavaScript doesn't have the block scope. So all, the function is only thing that can have the scope. And then also, uh, so let's say like array in JavaScript or the uh, string in JavaScript has lack of APIs. So that's why uh, there is the like, UTT libraries like underscore JS or something like that. And they also, I think this is the biggest problem of JavaScript. So there's a lot of writing styles. So you might have seen some like someone using the, the prototype to implement some kind of class thing. But the sum of uh, someone uh, don't use prototype, even this. And maybe someone like just every code in flat. So that's really bad code, though. But yeah. So there's a lot of problems. But uh, they know these problems. So these are changing. So uh, let's get back to the title. So the ES6. So how many of you guys know what ES6 is? OK. So ES6 is actually the ECMAScript 6. So what is ECMAScript? So ECMAScript is actually the, the standard for JavaScript, so which is uh, adopted by the TC39, which is a uh, technical committee in ECMA International. So well, why do we need standard? Because the historically, um, JavaScript is invented in uh, the Mozilla. And then after that, uh, uh, in, uh, Internet Explorer implemented. And then 
that was not JavaScript, that was JScript, so the, which was different from JavaScript because of the trademark issue. So we need a standard for it. So the ECMAScript, ECMAScript International started to standardize uh, the JavaScript. So the, this is actually the specification for JavaScript. So the JavaScript is the, actually the one of the implementation. So the other implementation is like uh, ActionScript 3.0, uh, which is actually the, the uh, based on the ECMAScript 4, which is already rejected. So the, yeah, you can say uh, ActionScript 3.0 always obsolete. And yeah. So yeah, ECMAScript 6 has a lot of features. So this is not only for the API improvements, but also like the other like syntax and so on. So you can see the, the list of feature on the left, and then you can see the, the list of the browser as a rows. So this is my current browser, can you see it? So as you can see it, most of browser doesn't support most of the features in ECMAScript 6. So it seems you, you cannot use the feature of ECMAScript 6 today. But don't worry. Maybe you can see the, the law, which has a lot of green on the left, right? Yeah, here's the thing. So the tracer, these are the compilers. So which is actually the, the, the compilers which generated generate the uh, ECMAScript 6 to, let's say, ECMAScript 5 or ECMAScript 3, which can run on any browsers. So uh, if you use them, you can use ECMAScript 6 today. So I will introduce these kind of compilers later, but uh, let me introduce the features at first. So, yeah, you might think um, you cannot use ECMAScript today, but uh, to prove that I implemented, I developed this presentation framework by, with ECMAScript 6. So this is written in ECMAScript 6. So I used a tracer compiler. So which means, yeah, you can use ES6 today because I'm using it. So yeah, I will also try to uh, introduce my presentation framework later. But yeah, so yeah, let me introduce the, the feature of ECMAScript 6. So I listed up the main features. These are not, um, this is not all. This is some of the features which is really important. Okay, <coughs> so first one, is function. So function <coughs> will be changed a lot in ES6. So the before ES6, you might define the function like this way, right? So you can also run this script by clicking here, okay? So you define the square, and then you know, it squares, so the, the, uh, the result will be four, right? This is simple, really simple. Um, function. But this is allow function in ES6, so you can define the function this way. So, yes, yeah, so you can like compare the three line to one line, right? You can just write allow, allow for, the, for defining the function. So, the result will be. Four, two, okay? So this is really simple, right? But arrow function is not only for the syntax sugar. So yeah, of course you, it's really easy to write function, right? But uh, it's not only for the syntax sugar. And then you're also, you can also write arrow function like this, <coughs> like having the, the parentheses. And then also, if you want to return the object, you can write this way. This is really simple, right? So, as I said before, 
This is not only syntax sugar. So the one of the, the problem which I mentioned before is the, um, the this problem. So the R function actually bind, bind this lexically. So which means maybe you might uh, saw this kind of code before, right? So in this callback, yeah, this callback, um, this will be window. So because of the, this problem. So the, this will be a window because the window calls this callback. So you have to um, save this to another place. And then you have to like create some kind of closure and then call the, the self inside of this. So the self in this callback will be the original this. Okay? So this will be window. Oh, maybe you cannot see this. But yeah, this will be the window in this callback. So that was the problem. So yeah, in ES3, um, we solved this kind of problem with this um, way. But in ES5, they introduced a uh, bind method. So the bind method is actually the, the one of the methods of the function. So if you use bind method, you can bind the, the, the this to the function. So you can just simply call this inside of the callback if you use bind to bind this. So yeah, this is kind of nice way, but uh, this is not the best. So the ES6, it, you can just write the arrow function. So the arrow function is actually bind uh, this leg screen. So you don't need to care about it anymore. This is really good, you don't think so? <laughs> so yeah, this is really exciting feature. So the next thing is parameter. So first one is default values. So default value is the, the default value of the function. Um, so yeah, uh, to see this example, like if you um, add some like default value for y, uh, you have to do this way by putting the, the two lines after the y, and then yeah, you can just call add one, only one parameter, and then the y will be one. So this is kind of default values in ES3. So this will be two, right? But the ES6 introduced the default values. So you can just simply put the like default value after the, the parameter. So it's like a uh, other language maybe you might try before. So yeah, this is also two. It's cool. And then um, the second one's rest parameters. So the rest parameter is actually uh, the asterisk <coughs> in Ruby. So yeah, let's see this example. So if you call some function with these parameters, so the one will be base, and then the other will be the, 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 the rest array. So the rest is actually array. So you can just simply use the, the array uh, inside of the function. So it will be 15. Okay. This is also cool. So the third one is spread operator. Spread operator is the, the opposite idea of the, the rest parameters. So if you put three um, period in, in front of the, the array, it will be spread. So the first A will be one, and B will be two, and three, and so on. So it will be 15 as well. Okay. So the next one is block scope. So uh, do you have any questions so far? I think it's too fast. Let's see, okay. So. Okay, um, let me continue. continue. So the block scope. So as I said before, uh, JavaScript doesn't have the block scope. 
but uh, in ES6, we will have block scope. So in ES3, if you define the value in the block, you can refer them. So there's no block scope. So the, the, the definition of value will be hoisted uh, in, at the beginning of the function. So it will be value. So you can refer them outside of the block. So, but in ES6, they introduce the let. The let is actually the, the um, works only in the block. So if you define let in the block, you can refine, uh, you can refer the, the variables uh, only in the block which you define. So if you try to refer value outside of the block, it will be error. Okay. This is block scope. And also they introduce const, constant. So constant is also works in the block scope. And then yeah, you can define a constant value. So if once you define the constant, uh, you cannot change the value anymore. So it will be error as well. Okay? So value is read only. And then also the function uh, will have block scope. So if you define function inside of the block, you cannot refer the function outside of the block. It will be error. Okay. So next thing is iteration and generators, which is the, the quite new idea in JavaScript. So the first of all, uh, they introduced for of loop, uh, which is new loop. So let's say you have the array like this. Uh, you can use for of loop for the array. So the, the, this val uh, will be each element in the array. Okay, so it will be one, two, three. This is really simple, right? So, yeah, I, I would also in, would like to introduce the, the generator. The generator is actually the, the new idea in JavaScript. So generator is, hmm, <clears throat> it's really difficult to explain, but um, generator is actually like, Makes, makes it easy to uh, create iterators. So um, the, this halogen is actually the generator function which generates generators. So <laughs> if you want to get the generator, you can simply call this function halogen, then you can get the generator. So um, this is a tricky thing and one, the so first time you call gen.next, the result will be hello, and the second, the result will be I am, and then third will be yo. So let's see the, oh, result, oh, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, you can get the uh, object by calling the, the next function. So, so let's say it's like, uh, yeah, the generator will stop uh, um, at, at each yield, right? So first time you call uh, hello gen next, uh, it will stop at the yield hello, and then second stop at the yield I am, and the third it stop at the yield Rio. So it is said that uh, it will solve the callback hell. So you can simply write uh, every type of like asynchronous computation in like a flat way, you can just put the yield. So yeah, I know it's really it's kind of confusing idea, but yeah, you might get used to it. So yeah, you can also uh, do this kind of way because the generator actually <coughs> generates the, the iterator. You can use for of loop as well. So you can simply call this, and then result will be hello, I am real. So that the this string will be the, uh, the hello and I am and real. Okay. Right? 
So the yeah, this is the most thing, most uh, most exciting feature I think in the ECMAScript uh, six. So that they introduce class finally. <laughs> so class is like this. So maybe you can understand this kind of like a syntax, right? Yeah, it's like a, as any other language. So you can just simply like, define class in this way. So you can have constructor in the frame. And you can also set the setter and getter in this way. This is really cool. So they used to, like, you used to have, you used to use the, the prototype. And then, you know, it's really annoying to define the, the like, the prototype object, right? You have to set the key and then the function, blah, 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 and something like that, and then you don't need to, you, you need to put the, the comma uh, uh, at the end of the function, right? So it was really annoying. But uh, you can simply define the class in this way. And then you can also the extend. You, you can also create the subclass way. So yeah, this is really simple. You can just extend it. Yeah, it's really, yeah, it's pretty cool. So you can also uh, call the super function. So the super function in constructor will be the, the constructor of the this class instrument, and then super play will be the super function uh, of the the instrument class. Right? So it's really simple. And then also, I think this is really exciting though. Um, so the property method assignment. So the so currently we have to uh, if we want to define the, the method uh, of the object, you have to um, you have to write the, the key at first, and then you have to define a function, right? But you can write the function this way. So now you have the two string function uh, for this object. So if you do this, you will get the value. This is also really simple. So the next one is module. So the module is like this. So let's say if you have user.js, you can export the class. And then also you can export the variables. And then let's say you have user view.js, you can import them by this syntax. And then now you can use uh, user and name variables. And also the modules, uh, the each file has the each scope. So um, the global, uh, global scope uh, will not be contaminated anymore. So you can just simply export it if you want to use outside of the file. This is also really simple, right? And then the last one is promise. So the promise is also the new idea in JavaScript. So the promise is providing the way of doing the asynchronous computation. So the promise actually creates the, the object uh, which wraps the, the asynchronous tasks inside. So let's say if you create this timeout promise, and then it takes the resolve and the reject uh, as the parameter. So the resolve and the reject is actually the, 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 uh, the function. So if you done the synchro asynchronous task, you can just simply call resolve uh, function. And then if the asynchronous task fails, you can just simply call reject function. So if you uh, use this timeout promise, um, so you might want to uh, do something after the, the asynchronous task is done, right? So if you do some kind of thing, you can just simply uh, use them method, them method. And then this callback of the them will be executed after the task will be finished. So, so down console um, will become uh, in the 100 milliseconds, okay? So, yeah, these are the uh, main features of the ES6. 
So, do you have any questions so far? Is it clear for you? Okay, yeah, this is uh, the summary of the, the, the features, okay? So, so how, but by the way, how to use them today? So as I mentioned before, we can use the compiler uh, to use every kind of like a ES6 features. Okay. So after I'm using Tracer, so let me introduce Tracer compiler. Tracer compiler is developed by Google, and then it it all, it actually um, transcompiles from ES6 to ES5. So you can run your ES6 code. Uh, in any browser which support ES5. So, but it actually requires runtime. So you need to load runtime before uh, running your ES6 code. And then also, they have the repo on the web. So, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can check that later. Okay, so yeah. And yeah, this works this way. So if you want to compile online, you can just simply load two files, which is tracer.js and the bootstrap.js. And then you can write the ES, ES6 code like this. Then the tracer compiler compiles the uh, script online, and then you can run it. So there's. Uh, they have also the, the options. So actually the let and const is an experimental feature, so if you want to use them, uh, you have to uh, set the experimental as two. But you know, the compiling online is supposed to be heavy, right? So you might want to uh, compile offline, so you can do it. So you can just npm install tracer, and then you can run the tracer command. So you can just specify the source file and then the output file. And then if you want to use it on browser, yeah, um, it requires runtime anyway. So you have to load the runtime. And then you can load your code. And then your code will be run on the browser. This is really simple. So actually, um, there's a lot of type of uh, tools uh, which you can use the uh, ES6. So uh, there's right, ES6 transpiler, ESNext. ESNext is actually um, Square is the proxy. And ES6 now, ProJS. Crozier compiler is also supporting the, the some of ES6 features. So you have a lot of choices. So yeah, you can try them. So, yeah, um, this is the, the compiler thing. And so, actually, um, the ES7 is under discussion right now. And then there's some more feature to the beyond the ES6. So, like, uh, this is not ES6 actually, but uh, yeah, you, maybe you can use it in the future beyond the ES6. I don't know when it comes, but yeah, the object observe is actually um, it's like uh, the what Bootstrap does in the the model. So you can like uh, listen um, the changes uh, in the the property of the object. And I think function is kind of like a uh, synchronous the the hundred hundred with a synchronous tax. So yeah. So. Yeah, uh, the, fi uh, <coughs> the last thing is uh, I'd like to um, explain this framework. So I've actually uh, developed um, this presentation framework for this talk because I, I wanted to prove uh, we can use ES6 today. So uh, this is HTML uh, presentation framework and then everything is written in ES6 and then uh, actually, I'm using the, the tracer compiler, and then generate from Markdown to uh, HTML. 
So I have GitHub repository, so if you are interested in, yeah, you can look into the code. And then also, um, as you can see in the, the code block, yeah, um, I've also developed this one. So, yeah, this is the, uh, this one, right? So you can actually the, run this code in the browser. So I've also developed this one. So this is called XJS. So run any JavaScript code in the play code uh, element. And you can also use with the highlighting library, like highlight.js or syntax highlight or something. And maybe you can embed, embed in your block. So I will have the GitHub repository here. This is not, this is not ready yet, but yeah, I will do that. So yeah, this is uh, the framework I used today. So that's all for now. So do you have any questions? Any questions for you? What? Okay. So how hard is it to debug the transcompiled code? Uh, yeah, I think this is a good question. So the question is how hard is it to compile? Yeah. To debug. To debug, right. right. Yeah. I think this is the one of the, the problem in Tracer compiler. The Tracer compiler compiles to the, the code, which is hard to read. So it's kind of difficult to debug for now. But you can, use, you can try another compiler as well. So maybe some of, some of, some of compiler doesn't require the runtime. So maybe you can read uh, the compiled code. There's also the option for Ah, yeah, yeah. An option to source map. Okay. Any other questions for you? Okay. If not, okay. Is there a question to that? No. Okay, sorry. False line. Okay then. I think let's say. Oh, there's one here. Oh, perfect. I'm so sorry. Question about the harmonic line. Uh, it looks pretty much like the remove.js the slides. So can you use some of the source code of the slides? Slides? Review JS. Mm -hmm. Review JS. Review JS? Ah, yeah. oh, Review JS. Uh, so uh, sorry, your question is? So you used uh, some of the Ah the presentation framework? Yes. Uh, yeah, actually I tried, but uh, the reason why they broke is I wanted to use ES6 for this presentation. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason. Yeah, I, I think yeah, review review JS is great. Yeah. So question. Um, do you know if there's a way to play nice with existing JavaScript frameworks like Angular? Like, is it possible? Um, I haven't tried yet, but uh, I think Angular the backbone is uh, writing the the their code in ES6. So maybe you can use them. You will use them, yeah. So they all have the same backbone, is that what you're saying? Hmm? They all have the same backbone? Yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Any other questions for you? <coughs> Go ahead. Uh, how can we use uh, ES6 in from the service side from Node.js? Yeah, Node.js actually has the ex uh, harmony option. So, some of feature is supported with the, the parameter, uh, with the, the option. But I, I, actually, I'm not familiar with Node.js, so maybe he will know well. Yeah, of course. Yes, it's in Node, so you can compile it using Tracer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Any other questions? Um, is there some like once browsers support native ES6? Uh, is there some sort of uh, foreseen fallback mechanisms to deliver the ES6 and ES5 code and the browser way? You mean in browser? Yeah, like some like I said, different type of script tag to the ES6 or something. 
Mm, I think once the browser supports the ES6, you can write the ES6, and then also the ES6 is also the ES5, right? So you can use the ES5 uh, yeah, code. Yeah, it's a control supports ES6, but I still need to target Internet Explorer or something. Uh, okay, yeah. Mm. So the browser is actually supported? Mm, no, so... Maybe in this kind of case, maybe you will have to use some kind of compiler or something um, to do so, that. So it will be like 10 more years until they actually deliver an ES6 code. But you know, if you use this kind of <laughs> compiler, yeah, you can run your ES6 code any browser which supports ES5. So that actually uh, IE8 is not fully support um, uh, ES5. So you can use this from ES9, IE9, sorry. IE9. <laughs> is now, what is it? So, so as a follow up to that, was, is there a big performance penalty to using a uh, uh, tracer like I said? Yeah, before? yeah, some of the penalty actually, yeah. So, yeah, maybe, yeah, you can just use it for your like uh, learning for now. Because some of feature has uh, a lot of like a uh, uh, this advantage in terms of the performance. So, but you can actually develop with the ES6 now. So, then again, so what, what, what do you think, in, uh, what point in time would we actually be able to write production ES6 So, uh, the publication uh, of the ES6 will be next year. So I think, yeah, after next year, if you want to run, uh, use them natively. Mm. Okay, any other questions? Okay, if not, let's thank Rio. Thank you very much.